what follows are the photo trials. First from Alan, the official photographer. This is the YouTube video that June made of the first dance. And so we're going straight into those photo trails. I shot the pictures which appear in the later photo trails on this little camera. Let's go into those photo trails now. Starting with those from Alan. Photos shot by Alan Edwards, the official photographer and our friend since 1970 when we all worked with him at Ferranti's. So we start with the wedding cake. And what else do we have? Yes, that was when the dancing was happening. And yeah, there's a crowd. Some people recognize who they are. And no time to get a crip sheet together. And yes, those are <laughs> no time to say, is it? It looks as though these are not in the order they were shot. And yeah. So, what have we got here? That's that game, apparently, isn't it? Yes. Do you remember the name of that? Well, it's like Connect Four. Ah, I wouldn't know. And, yes, there is <laughs> Lasagna <laughs> with an unfortunate guy who she grabbed uh, on the dance floor, as she did Robin. Uh and yeah that was the first dance which June had a lovely video of and that's the place and that looks like uh, that's that game again isn't it yeah and... oh yes that's Sally Robin's sister with her boyfriend David I think that's the correct term and yes Becky and yes Becky is the lawyer in the family. Oh, yes. Oh dear, what is she checking out? Ah, oh, that. Yes, goodness knows. Probably loads of other photographs people took. And these look like the bridesmaids, or two of them. Yes. And here's two more. Michelle and Samantha. Oh, Here's a smartly dressed guy. Robin, father of the bride, holding his trousers up. Because there wasn't time to put a belt on. Well, rather wasn't time to put braces on. So, this must be... Oh, is this the service? Yeah. Oh, do you know anything about that, lady? Don't know, do we? Ah, oh, yes, so here's the audience at the service. And, oh, Michelle gave a speech. It wasn't recorded, I don't think, was it? Yes. <coughs> Saskia saying her vows. They don't say love, honour and obey now, do they, dear? No. They don't. They should do. Although some would argue who's got to obey whom. So he's probably making his vows now, promising not to muck about too much. Ah, now, was that gentleman the... Gary's brother, best man. Yes, that's what I thought. Oh, you've got to... Don't worry about those noises in the background. It's June's stupid smartphone interrupting. Yeah, that wasn't mine. Oh, that was mine, was it? Mm. Uh, And, oh yes, that must be the end of the ceremony. Everybody gives a little applause. Yeah, some lovely flowers there. Oh, who's that guy with his camera? Sort of, not a serious camera like Alan used. Oh dear, this is the sign-in. Oh, 
right, there we are, walking off. And then all the guys nattering. And yes, <laughs> Gary, the bridegroom and best man, and the, the men. Gary with sons, Jack and Harry. And yes, Gary with his mum. And yes, most people will be recognised as. <laughs> I like that one. That was the Swedish chef, wasn't it, on the left? Yeah. Oh, who's doing that naughty sign behind Samantha? Mm. Nice, some nice group mm. photos yes. there. I can hear people coming down the it's stairs. Some Gary's nieces. Yeah. yeah, lovely group photo. Yeah. That's a lovely one you took from the window, yeah. looking yeah. looking down. That was absolutely lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This and yeah. <laughs> Oh, is me holding my trousers up? Yes. I did have to give a little speech. And Gary doing his. And the best man, his brother. And some of the stars of the dancing. There's Clive and Jill, who were our neighbours opposite many years ago. And there's the cake. Oh. And there's the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the grandpappy. Ah, oh, it looks like. Yes, the cutting of the cake. And the first dance. Which, as I remind you, June put a lovely video of it up on her YouTube channel. Yeah, some very expert dancing going on there. I think it was an Elvis Presley track, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, you will say that stills give a flavour, but it's not the same as the video. Oh, or the kiss at the end. Yes. A lot of laughter going on there. Yes, and you and Becky and Jordan, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And uh, just not time to catch the names. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh, lots of dancing. Oh, who's that guy dancing? Hmm. Amazing, I had two hands free. I would have thought one of them was holding my trousers up. Saturday the 19th of August 2023 the wedding day of Gary and Saskia and it's not my fault the fact that uh, these photos the ones from 
Allen, the official photographer, we know are going to be good. But uh, these are the ones mostly from my pocket camera. And yes, there was a certain messing around, including on the dance floor. And yes, that was probably the suits. Oh yeah, you can buy them cheap. Uh, rather than hire them, you can buy them. As I repeat, it's not my fault. And what have we here? Uh, perhaps check in the trackers for anybody who's interested in whether we get safely to where we're going. Uh, the cats are guarding the premises. And June is going to use my car. Yes, the tracker, so people can see where we are if they need to know. Um, so we can all squeeze into the car. Because, of course, we're all four of us are going. Yeah. So, Toady is doing his usual bit of laying on the drive to block the drive so they can't get out. He did eventually move. June's driving, of course. Yeah, on our way. And, yeah, well, first of all, we're going to Gary and Saskia's in order to the bridesmaids and the bride can get changed. And they've got their cat, Sebby. So we waited in the garden. Yes, there's CC. Uh, I was a bit confused at first because I expected her to speak more like the Swedish chef, but now she seems to have lost that Swedish accent. So, looks like we're probably on our way now. The yes, so we we've got to the hotel. It's the Swallowfield Mill, I believe, hotel. And yeah, so. The guests are assembling. I can't remember the schedule at the moment. But, yeah, everybody's pretty well ready. A few photographs being taken. Walking down the aisle. Alan taking photographs. Yes. Oh, yes, I like that candle. It's very impressive. And I think this is a sort of, not sure what they called it, a late breakfast afternoon whatever but the lovely thing of course was everybody coming together there's a glimpse of my sister and David ah Steve was how left holding the baby and there's the cake now you'll notice all these pictures are blurred it's not deliberately blurred it's just I'm afraid the quality of the camera I was using yeah so that is getting into the evening then on the dance floor So it goes on, and yeah, <laughs> there's the baby. And at the end of this, there's ten photographs that June took with her smartphone, and they certainly came out more clearly. There's Jill. Oh, that's little Jack, I think, dancing. Yeah, let's check in. I don't know what's going on there, the pictures are too blurred. Right, this might be the pictures from June coming up. Yes, these are much better quality. There's CC talking to Cheryl. There's the bridesmaids with, or some of them, a couple of the bridesmaids. Oh, I don't know. C cutting of the cake. Yes, June took several of the cake being cut. And, yeah. And I'll end on that picture to wrap up this photo trail. And of course, it's not my fault. Sunday the 20th of August, 2023, the day after the wedding. And we started with a wedding breakfast. I suppose that's what you call it. Those of us who'd stayed overnight and a quick look around the place including the photographs up on the wall which had some history of the place that's the picture i particularly like at swallowfield mill it was a mill apparently after the war uh, burnt down in 1960 i think anyhow a lovely place so we're making our way back home the usual familiar route past the barristide 
back home. Pussy cats, I think, have looked after the place while we've been away. And yeah, the robot boat's still there. I'm plucking the stuff out of the car, back into the house, and what should be there on the floor in the lounge but a dead mouse. And we think that was probably left there by Lady, because Toady normally leaves them on the doormat near the front door. Yeah, hello Toady. And some other kit. Robin's trying to get working. Old story, trying to get other people to help me get stuff working. That's GPS loggers. I think it was back in 2019 I discovered those. Yeah, watching tennis, of course. And Michelle's cat lady relaxing. I checked what the tracker said in terms of walking around Swallowfield Mill. And we got home okay. So, that's probably pretty well the end of that photo trail. Ah, you played it this far? Okay. Right, well those are the photos. And um, I'm going to end now with a bit of, some people call it propaganda. It was stuff that was shot. Yeah, reminder, that was the little camera that was used. And uh, yes, it started from about here. Now, what I put on the screen, because global warming is rearing itself, it's something that's been on my grumpy page for years. The remarkable James Lovelock, who passed away on the 26th of July, his 103rd birthday. I'll read out the, what this says here. This has been on the grumpy page for years, not long after the publication of his book, Revenge of Gaia. We can't stop global warming, but we may delay it by a few decades to give us time to prepare for its effects. Vast areas of the world, including as close as continental Europe, become in arid desert, shrinking of habitable areas of the planet to much smaller parts of the planet, closer to the poles. The Earth will then only be able to support a small fraction of its present population and there will be a need for massive migration. Places like the UK will remain temperate a little longer, so be an attractive destination. We need all world governments to cooperate to prepare for this inevitability. Also to agree things like reduce use of fossil fuels, dig us a few more decades to prepare. And then it goes on, the above is not a quote, but how I remember what James Lovelock said in his book, The Revenge of Gaia, etc. That's been unchanged on my site for years and um, right well the thing I should mention yes retired happy and spending that kids inheritance is uh, for some time now I've not been able to drive due to well several mistakes at the TVLA and what I will say um, is that I have new evidence of what happened inside uh, the TVLA which um, I won't publish yet because I'm still waiting for the reply to the letter which was delivered by recorded delivery to the head of the TVLA and also uh, other people. So uh, I'll put in at the end of this long video, the video that's uh, gone up, me talking about the TVLA and basically in summary it, uh, it says I don't want anybody to get in, into trouble and that is definitely the case and resigning is too easy problems need to be fixed but quite honestly that is a minor thing compared with all the other things that are going on in the world not least wars and of course what's in the background and very important is global warming so let's run into that back in 2012. Snoopy the Viking, the skipper. I don't think he'd make it otherwise. 
We've also got another bit and piece here. This is a GPS logger that logs the position every 15 minutes. For that was back in 2012. Um, the guy that put this material together, including live broadcast and what went up on the BBC website, is Ben Moore. Right, on to the next topic. Right. Now, I'm going to do this all in one take. Um, all re unrehearsed and unscripted, so sorry about that. Uh, what I'd like to happen, if anybody picks up on the uh, DVLA story, is, as I say, nobody getting into trouble, and that is a, that's a genuine request, but when they, they find flaws in procedures where they don't cover certain things, be good if those are fixed. What I think would be useful uh, for anybody looking at the DVLA and then perhaps helping them, is first of all their organization chart show, showing the structure yes it's well known who the head of the DLA remarkable woman looking at her CV um, and relevant to this story is uh, the head of the health part but it would be very useful to see even if names aren't attached obviously the names can be attached where they're public already is how many people in each branch, how many people are reporting to how many. Uh, so a simple tree would help. I suggest that first of all. Then perhaps even more important is how many people working for the DVLA, even if you don't identify the individuals, are salaried by the DVLA <coughs> excuse me, directly as opposed to contracted through an agency or a business. That is very important, and we've seen what's been happening in places like the NHS for years. Um, so that comes into the equation in terms of whether money is well spent, and of course the TVLA collects a lot of money. Um, and there are probably other things as well. But as a starting point, I'd hope anybody that responds to this uh, I can't afford to get overloaded. We've got other things to do, many other things to do. Uh, and we'll be taking a holiday. That would be public, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm tracked everywhere by different things. And in fact, if anybody's paranoid about it, uh, anybody who's tracking somebody or looking at somebody's probably seen <laughs> already. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, there's me wittering on, which is one of my main weakness since I was a little little child. That's why if you put things up clearly be careful what you put up and uh, often it can do some good. I'm now in the kitchen and June's rustling up some food in the microwave for Samantha. The microwave was invented by James Lovelock if you didn't know and here's Samantha and of course there's tennis on the television, just for a change. So, oh yes, point out, holidays in Sicily, we're going off to Sicily again soon. And into the hall, yes, nice expensive paintings here. Yep, expensive little pocket camera, <laughs> not expensive. and through into the lounge and out to wrap up this video by saying look after yourselves stay safe and enjoy what days we have